Salary Cup and welcome to another episode here for the Funkin' Pod. And this time it's Media Prof reacts to Twitter. It's about time, right? Elon Musk bought Twitter now. I know, a week ago, two weeks ago, it feels like years ago with so many news popping up every single day. And oh my god. Whew. So, what are the thoughts of someone that works in the media, that researches media, digital marketing, advertising, that used to work in consult, actually still partly works in consulting, and so on. So here are my thoughts. Um, whew, this is either going to be really long or it's going to be really short. It's going to be one word, the F word. Um, no, let's let's try to condense it, but let's not try to swear, because then we get demonetized. <laughs> so, my thoughts on Twitter. Was Twitter perfect before Elon Musk bought it? Definitely not. Definitely not. Was it, like, you probably don't even know, but it's also partly it owned no it wasn't that the Jack Dorsey was the main owner, right? There were like other investors from Saudi Arabia and whatnot. So you can all look it up. So it, it's not like it was oh this this those nice people were owning Twitter before and now it's this crazy guy. Not the case. Also, not the other way around. It wasn't like it's just like one snowflake was owning Twitter and now the savior of free speech is taking over. Yeah, so it's it's not like that. But do we see changes? Yes, we see changes. So at least you, you cannot say that Elon Musk isn't changing stuff. <laughs> now the question is, is that good or bad? And for lots of those things, we still have to wait and see, because, well, hmm, we're not sure yet. What we can say, though, is that Elon and his team maybe handle the takeover not as well as they could, and, like, for example, those, those things that they, they, they fire lots of people, right? Um, that apparently they ordered, like, all the offices around the world to come back to work in the office. And then he, he took a step back. He's like, yeah, yeah, if people can come to the office, they should. But if they cannot, because they live somewhere else, they don't have, like, housing close to work. If their manager vouches for them, then they can also do work from home, of course. So that, that's what he said, I think, yesterday or so. So it's just unfortunate, that, that way of they, they're communicating, right? So and Twitter being a communications platform, it's just weird when, like, internal communication, like, goes to the outside and you're like, what? Like, if a communications platform and they can't communicate. And if, if he runs Twitter like that, like, how is he running Tesla, SpaceX, and so on? <sighs> so that's a bit weird. But, hey, okay, that happens. Right? It happens to the best. Then the thing that really is a bit weird, though, for me as, like, a tech nerd and... I used to love Twitter. I've been on Twitter since 2000, whatever. Whenever it, whenever it popped up, I've been like one of the early adopters on Twitter. Like I've been there right away when it popped up. And uh, I don't, I, I don't want to sound like a hater because it's not, like I said, well, it wasn't perfect before. But now they're trying new things all the time and they don't work. And then they just, they just scratch it again. I'll scrap it again. Sorry, not a native speaker. Which is fine for a startup, which is fine if you do it like behind closed doors. You try something, you beta test it, you roll it out to a few users, and then you scrap it again if it doesn't work. But this right now, we do this. No, we don't do it. We do this. No, we don't do it. We do this. We do it. It's just really annoying. It just doesn't look professional. And the fact now that lots of advertisers leave, right? You might say, yeah, we don't need advertisers. No, but the internet, and it's, it's unfortunate, it's very unfortunate, but the internet runs on ads. Now you're like, what the, no, i give you a second to think about it. why. Because, but how, you need to make money somehow, you need to monetize, right? You can't just offer a service for free because you're a nice person. You have, you have to pay for stuff, you have to pay for your employees, you have to pay for like hosting, keep the stuff up and running, maintenance, development. So it costs money. So you have to make money. Also, other platforms, what they do very well, 
is helping creators to make money. Like on YouTube, if you're watching this video right now, YouTube helps me to make money. If you're listening to this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you're listening to this, yeah, you might you you will listen, you will hear an ad before the actual podcast starts. So they help somewhat to monetize you what you create. And it works via advertisement, right? If there's then no ads on Twitter, difficult. Now, then saying, okay, Twitter Blue, for example, will get you, I don't even want to talk about a verification, will get you verified and then maybe no ads. That could be like a selling point, that no ads thing, right? But now then saying, nah, we put it all behind a paywall, I'm telling you right now, no one's going to pay for that. Everyone, everybody and their grandma will go somewhere else. Like, you can, someone else just going to open like a new, a, new, a, new, a new social network and everyone's going to use that. Or like... TikTok, like ByteDance, going to be like, hey, we have like a text based TikTok now, let's check it out. And everyone's going to use that because no one's going to pay, no one's going to pay like $20 or whatever to look behind the paywall. Like if, it, if it's a, if it's a, like a strong, a, a hard paywall. Soft paywall, maybe. Like have the more, majority of the content free and then like some extra content behind the soft paywall. Who knows? But a hard paywall, no one's going to use it. Again, you could avoid all those things if you would focus more on having creators being able to monetize, maybe. So use advertisement to benefit the creators, to benefit the brands, maybe even, which I also hate it, but at least that's how you could keep it free. Now it's a verification. Let's address it. I mean, you've seen it. You've seen the screenshot probably, right? Where it's like, where Do Doja Cat said she called herself Christmas and like, hey, Elon Musk, I don't want to be Christmas the whole time. Can you help? And he's like, yeah, sure. You can change your name now. And then she changed her name to Elon Musk and just, thanks. <laughs> great example. Even if it's fake, still a great example, right? So that verification for everybody clearly doesn't work. So now you say, we have an extra verification for celebrities and NGOs and so on. So yeah, I have to double check. I have to see that it's a verification that it says official down below. Uh, that's frustrating, man. That's frustrating. And 80% of people on Twitter probably don't do that. So it's way <laughs> easier now to just post, push fake news, meddle in elections and so on because people just look for the blue check mark who don't know better. So what I'm saying is that, that verification for everyone, yes, verify everybody, but like this blue check mark thingy, to just sell it, why? Why would you do that? Either, either you say membership fee, 10 bucks a month, then no ads, and whatever, like messaging, direct messaging. And if you don't pay then 10 bucks, you don't get DMs, and you see advertisement. And you can, you can add people, add message them, like add add common but you cannot dm people and if you pay the 10 bucks you can dm people and you don't have ads for example but this 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 chaos right now is just it's just it doesn't do elon musk any favors his personal brand it doesn't do his other companies any favors he sold like what four billion of tesla's the tesla shares and it doesn't do twitter any favors advertisers leaving Users living, Elon says, more active users than ever before. Yeah, I also have like a thousand more bots tagging me every freaking day. And I'm not even famous on Twitter. And I have like a hundred bot tags. Like I'm not even exaggerating every single day. So there are your active users. Congratulations. Slow clap. So, and again, I'm a fan of Twitter. I love Twitter. Twitter's awesome. Twitter used to be my favorite social network. So Please, Elon, don't completely F it up. I gotta say, the one funny thing was when John Lecher, is that how you pronounce it, former CEO of T-Mobile, said like, hey, Elon, maybe I should run Twitter for you. You need someone with experience, blah, 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 blah. And Elon just replied, no, <laughs> I like that. So he's still funny. So I like funny Elon. But I don't like erratic Elon who's like, that sucks, let's change it. Oh, m my change doesn't work. Ah, I don't like that. It's not, in, it's not in the beta version anymore. Twitter has been like stable, in the stable version for the past 10 years or so. So you can't just F around. It's really, really sad. 
Um, I think Marquis Brownie, Brownie, I'm sorry if I misspell your name, man. Um, MKHBD, right? The, the tech guy, the tech review guy, had a great video. He's called like Dear Twitter. And he made some good points also from a creator point of view and also explains why the internet runs on ads. I mean, that, that everyone in digital marketing says that. But yeah, good point there. So I just highly recommend it. you check this one out mm -hmm. on, on YouTube. And it's called Dear Twitter by MKHBD. I think that's his, that's his YouTube channel. Um, yeah, I, that, that, I mean, you can see me still being flustered because I don't want to just surveil and cry and everything. So again, it doesn't work what he's doing right now. Those All those changes, those erratic changes without real thought behind it don't work. That There's a reason why I was about to say why Facebook always like thinks about the changes longer, but I mean, given how many times Instagram changed something and they changed it back, maybe that's not the best example, but usually companies, they test it and they prototype it. I teach at a university. I can't believe that my university students have a more thoroughful process than, than Twitter right now. So you, proto you have an idea, right? You prototype it, you test the prototype with a selected audience, you get some feedback, you implement that feedback, you test it again before you roll it out. And that's an iterative process. <laughs> oh my God. If you want, I can teach you that, Elon Musk. I can, my students can teach you that. Um, yeah, so what I'm thinking, what I think, not that it matters, but what I, I think they should be doing, like besides those erratic changes all the time, besides getting their internal communication together, can also help there if you want to. By the way, Slack channels, public, private, right? Just saying. <laughs> um, so what I would suggest, you need ads, you need advertising revenue, and you cannot put it all behind a hard paywall. So I would do like a combination. I would, I would do like a combination between soft paywall maybe some premium events or something I would have behind a soft paywall. The normal Twitter is free with ads. <laughs> and you cannot DM. If you pay, let's say five bucks per, per month, you get the feature to DM people and you don't see advertisement. And if you pay 10 bucks, you do the calculation, 15, 20 bucks, you get to see all the premium live events. Yeah, I stole it from WWE. They give it a different name. You see like premium live events on Twitter, live streams, whatever that might be. Live Q and A sessions with some, with Elon Musk celebrities. Like I saw the other day, he was in a, in a room with Kim.com and all those crypto guys talking about FTX video and podcast on this coming soon. So um, give them something valuable, I would say. I the, the clubhouse thingy, just like awesome clubhouse rooms included, basically. Sounds good, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And don't do this blue check mark thing. Do something else. So if, if you want to highlight people that, that pay for Twitter, do something else, but don't do the blue check mark. The blue check mark has been around for too long, so, so, so don't, don't play with that. Um, leave it for verified people like celebrities, NGOs, whatever. Um, Journalist, I know Elon Musk hates journalists. I don't know. Now that I say it, I see why he does it. But I know there must be a different way. Not not everybody who just pays the money should 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 have like the same standard, right? I mean, so I said, don't do that right now. Just give him like a verified tag or something, and that's it. So that that that's it for now. Before I, before I lose it completely and start crying, what are your thoughts on Twitter? Like, do you still like it? I mean, I have to say, I'm, I am I am active right now, but just like to watch it burn, because um, yeah, that's just exciting. So let me know what 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 you think. Um, your thoughts on Twitter? Are you still using it? You're gonna stop using it? What are your ideas on how to make it better? Um, really curious. So shout out in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, share this thing on Twitter. <laughs> and yeah, I can't wait to hear and read your ideas. Until then, stay safe, take care. I'm at Safe Fun on Twitter, and we'll talk soon. Sorry, Cap.